Hey everyone, today I'm going to be showing you how it's possible to capture a magnetic field using a superconductor. Superconductors work through something called a Cooper pair. It's a quantum mechanical effect that only works at extremely low temperatures, around liquid nitrogen temperatures. And so in order to keep it being a superconductor, you have to keep it really cold. But as long as you keep it that cold, those electrons that you start in moving inside the superconductor will never stop. So what that means is that when I put a superconductor on some magnets and then move it away, those electrons actually keep flowing inside the superconductor, and they'll keep flowing indefinitely as long as I keep it cold enough. So this is a special piece of paper that can view magnetic fields. For example, if I put the paper on this track here, you can see the magnetic field of all these magnets lining the track. And you're not just seeing through the paper. If I cover up the track, you can still see the magnetic field. So for example, if I take my superconductor, put it on the track, the superconductor is floating on the track. And that's because there's electrons moving in the superconductor that are opposing these magnets here. And those electrons will keep moving in that same pattern even after I remove it from the track. So I'm gonna take it off from the track right now. Now let's measure and see if we can see the same pattern on there. So I take it off. You can see in the middle how there's a line in the middle of it, just like there's a line in the middle of the track here. So you can see that line. Now we're gonna wait for it to warm up and let's see if that line goes away. I'm gonna warm it up. still there. So the electrons are just still flowing around in there. And look, we get nothing now. So no pattern of the track whatsoever. If I put it on the track, nothing happens. Nothing. Once you create those eddy currents in the superconductor, they'll keep moving around in a circle indefinitely as long as you keep it cold enough. But if you raise it above the transition temperature, then those electrons will suddenly hit the brakes and stop. With very sensitive instruments, you can measure that change in resistance that suddenly drops to zero. But I don't have any of those instruments, but I wanna show you a different way you can do it just using the magnetic field. Because those electrons create a magnetic field when they're moving around, what you can do is just measure the magnetic field of the superconductor and watch it suddenly drop to nothing as soon as those electrons stop. So right now I have my superconductor in this tape roll here. And I'm gonna place my magnetic field detector. So we get a baseline of around 63. But now let me get the eddy currents flowing in there. So I've created the eddy currents in there and they're moving now. I'll pull it off there, stick it on. Now watch. <laughs> Look how high that magnetic field is now. After the initial push of putting the superconductor on those magnets, the electrons just kept flowing through the superconductor. Even after a long time of leaving them in the liquid nitrogen, walking away, doing other stuff, coming back, you can measure the magnetic field and it's still there. So what I can do... So now I've got the eddy currents moving in there. I can measure them. Really high right now. And if I put it back in my liquid nitrogen now, they're still not gonna stop, even after a long time. Okay, now it's been like an hour. Let's measure our superconductor and see what it looks like. Okay, let's see if it's still there. Yep, the pattern's still there with that line down the middle. Let's see if we can measure it. Yep. But now we're gonna watch it warm up and see if it actually changes. Oh, there it goes. It's hitting its transition temperature now. So now we're already back to baseline. So what that means is that we've hit the critical temperature now. 
So if I try to put this on my track, it shouldn't work. One thing you'll notice is the magnetic field that we're measuring didn't drop off immediately. It kind of slowly went down. But that's not how it shows when you see a resistance measurement graph and then it just drops to zero. That's because in our superconductor, it's a type two superconductor and it's not all cooling down at the same time. So different portions will reach their critical temperature at different times. And because we're just measuring it as some distance above it, the magnetic field is just gonna slowly drop off as all those different portions of the superconductor hit their critical temperature. And so you kind of see this gentle decrease as opposed to an immediate drop off. But if you can control the temperature so that it's all cooling down at the same time, it should immediately drop off wherever you're measuring it. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And you can also subscribe to my shorts channel called Action Lab Shorts, where I do videos similar to this channel, but they're a lot shorter in less than a minute. And thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.